Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about the most important topic physics that is motion in a straight line. This motion in a straight line topics is belongs to mechanics. First of all, we will see uh, what is that mechanics. Generally, mechanics is a branch of physics. Mechanics is a branch of physics which deals about state and motion of the body. Mechanics is a branch of physics which deals about state and motion of the body. This mechanics can be divided into three types. First one, kinematics. Kinematics, first part. Second part, statics. And then dynamics. Dynamics. Actually, first we can say that statics. Statics is nothing but which is a branch of mechanics which deals about the bodies which are under rest condition. Means what are the bodies are at rest condition that completely discussed in statics topics. But we are going in a motion topic. Okay, so this is not in this we are not going to discuss. Kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. Which deals about motion of the body. Motion of the body without cause of motion. Without cause of motion without cause of motion means generally we are not discussing about how the body is start or who projected the body or who throws the body we are not discussed just we discuss the body is in motion that's all that means we are discussing about the motion of the body but without the cause of motion what is the cause of motion we are not discussed in kinematics this kinematics we can divide it into again like three parts first motion in 1d motion in 1d 1d means 1d stands for one dimensional next motion in 2d motion in 2d 2d stands for two dimensional and motion in 3d 3d means three dimensional okay again we can discuss about deeply about this now comes to dynamics dynamics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body with cause of motion motion of the body with cause of motion generally what is the cause of motion the cause of motion is what is cause of motion Yes, the cause of motion is force. For example, now I am saying that a body is projected vertically upwards. Body projected vertically upwards. Projected vertically upwards. That's we are discussing in this topic. But with what force we are projecting the body that we are discussing here. Nothing but what is the cause of motion here? It is not going by itself. I am not using any magician here, any magic here, just that's not going by itself. We need to give some force. Actually, what is the cause of motion? The cause of motion is force, but we are not discussing about the force in this topic. So here we are discussing about in the dynamics, force and then Newton laws and then work, power, energy. So those are all comes under dynamics topic. Okay, now we'll come to this kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of mechanics which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. Means which deals about motion of the body without cause of motion. What is the cause of motion? Force is the cause of motion. But here we are not discussing about the force. We are not discussing about the force. And this mechanics, uh, this kinematics generally we can divide it into three parts. Motion in 1D, one dimensional. Actually, that's only our topic. Motion in a straight line. What is a 1D? What is the meaning of 1D? 
a body is moving in a particular direction means at any interval of time the body is having only one direction that we can say that motion in 1D. Best example, if you consider if you're dropping your body from particular height, that's we can say that freely falling body means if I'm dropping this body from this particular height, so what is the direction? The direction is vertically downwards. So that we can say that 1D. In case if you are projecting the body upwards, projecting the body upwards. So when which is going upwards, then again the body is having 1D, one particular direction that we can give the example of 1D motion and also the bodies are moving in a straight line also we can able to give the 1D and 2D, 2D means a particle is having at a time two different directions, two different directions, best example circular motion why circular motion so see here the direction of the particle is continuously changes the direction of the particle continuously changes and the particle is having two different directions two different directions see here x positive x negative x positive y negative y means two different directions the particle here you can consider the particle is having two different directions here two different directions. At anywhere you can consider the particle is having two different directions that we can able to give 2D motion. And also projectile motion means any body you are projecting into the air with an angle theta. So then the body motion we can say that 2D motion. That is our topic of motion in plane. Motion in plane. Now 3D motion. 3D stands for three dimensional. Actually, what is three-dimensional? Three-dimensional bodies are particles, dust particles. In the early morning, when the sunlight is entered into your home, just if you are open the window, then you can observe the small, small dust particles. What is the direction of the dust particles? Those are moving downwards? No. Upwards? No. Forward? No. Backward? No. Means we are not able to say those are moving in a particular direction. They can move in any particular direction in three dimensionally. Three dimensionally means like this. Forward. This side. This side. So any particular direction they can able to move. So that's we can able to give 3D. What are the examples for 3D? Motion of the dust particles. Motion of the house fly. Motion of the house fly. Maki. So how it is moving. That can be moving in different directions. And motion of the kite. Kite. Kite also is moving in 3D only. So this is about the simply the kinematics. Now our topic. Now let's enter into our topic. Motion in 1D. Motion in 1D. In motion in 1D what we are going to discuss about. First we need to know about that. What we are going to discuss about. We are going to discuss about first thing motion parameters. Motion parameters. What are the motion parameters? Parameters. After that. The bodies are moving in a particular means so we are giving the introduction of the motion parameters. After that, equations of motion. Equations of motion. Equations of motion. This is second part. And after that, bodies are moving in a horizontal line. Horizontal line, then on horizontal direction, only one particular direction, horizontal direction. So then what about the equations of motion and what about the state velocity, that is the motion parameters, that we are doing. Horizontal direction. Next about vertical direction. So this is simply the total parts we are going to discuss about in uh, one day topic. What are those? Motion, motion parameters, equations of motion, horizontal direction and vertical direction. And let's we will move to, we will discuss one about one another. So first of all, what is motion? Motion is nothing but a body said to be in motion. When we can say that body is in motion? Yes. The position of the body the position of the body is changes with respect to time. 
with respect to time the position of the body changes with respect to time then we can say that the body is in motion time we are considering as a reference by the changing time if the position of the body changes so then we can say that the body is in motion what is rest rest means simple the position of the body does not changes the position of the body does not changes not changes does not changes with respect to time with respect to time so then the particle we can say that which is under rest condition rest condition so first thing motion position of the body changes with respect to time and second condition is position of the body does not changes with respect to time changes does not changes what are the examples for motion motion of the body is example you can able to give best example you have to give so the best examples are revolution of the planets around the sun revolution of the planets so what are the planets we have in our solar system that we can able to use the motion example and also uh, watch motion of the hands in our watch those are also in motion so that objects it, it need to be changed their position with respect to time rest condition rest means the position of the body does not change is what we can able to give the best example board it's not changing its position so that we can say that under rest condition so generally rest and motion both are related to rest and motion are relative what is the meaning of the relative relative means the appearance is continuously changes appearance is continuously changes what is the meaning of that see here for that i am taking one example there is a uh, here we are on the surface of earth earth a person is standing at the top of the building top of the building and one person is observing from him from the ground he just standing so i am giving the name a b b observes a according to b what is the state of a a is in motion or rest a is in motion or rest according to b yes a is at rest with respect to b with respect to b a at rest very good with respect to b a at rest but now one person is in observing from moon by telescope one person c c is observing a from the moon by telescope now what about the state of the a what about the state of the a a is in motion or rest yes a is in motion because earth is rotates na earth rotates along the earth the building rotates and he is the on the top of the building so that's it so that means with respect to c a is in motion a in motion so see here what is happened one person with respect to b at rest again same person with respect to c is in motion but which thing is right which thing is right in that which thing is right both are right both are right so that's why we can say that motion and rest are related to means changes the appearance is changes for example just i am observing the board board is at rest condition with respect to me the board is at rest condition but if a person is observing from the moon by the telescope it is in rotation means it is moving along the surface of the means uh, means it is also rotates because earth is rotates so that's why this is in motion actually with respect to earth it is in motion with respect to moon it is in motion but with respect to earth it is at rest condition by the changing of appearance that should be changes so that's why we are using the term rest and motion or relative functions rest and motion are relative functions means it appearance can be changes both are true 
both are true but based on their background means from there from where we are observing that okay next we can take the types of motion what are the generally types of motion and what we are going to discuss here generally the types of motion or motion can be divided into generally based on their characters based on direction we divided the motion into three types motion in 1d motion in 2d motion in 3d but based on the characteristics of motion so motion can be divided into three types sorry four types translatory motion first thing translatory motion next rotatory motion rotatory motion and third oscillatory motion oscillatory motion what are those translatory motion rotational motion and oscillatory motion and also random motion random motion let's see one by one what is translatory motion so now we are going to discuss about this only main important translatory motion translatory motion is nothing but the motion of a particle in a particular direction means particular direction means that may be 1d may be 2d but it should be having a particular direction so that we can say that simply translatory motion so i'll give one example for the translatory motion so here i am considering a bus the bus contains 60 passengers and one driver Total how many passengers? 60 passengers and one driver here. Now, the bus is moving in a strike line with velocity V. In a strike line with a velocity V. Now, what about the velocity of the driver? Velocity of the driver also V only. What about the velocity of the passengers? Also V only. Means all particles of the body are having same velocity. Different particles of the body is having same velocity, same displacement, same acceleration. Then the motion we can say that a translatory motion. Different particles of the body is having same velocity same displacement same acceleration so that we can say that translatory motion simple translatory motion so translatory motion again linear motion and as well as curvilinear motion so like that we can divide it is moving in a straight line or it is moving in a curved path you in case bus is taking turn all passengers also takes the turn even driver also takes the turn that's not a matter whatever it at a particular each and every particle of the rigid body are having same velocity same displacement same acceleration then the motion we can say that translatory motion for example i am considering this body this body contains different number of particles different number of particles now the particle is moving what is the displacement traveled by the first particle same displacement traveled by the second particle also let's see here from here onwards i am taking see here this is the first last particle and this is the first particle how much displacement they traveled how much distance for example from here to here m yeah, meters and here to here also m yeah, meters both particles are traveled same displacement same displacement and both are moving with same velocity both are moving with same velocity both are having same acceleration same direction so that's why this motion we can say that translatory motion so then what about rotational motion rotation motion naturally not our part okay no problem let's be this the motion of a particle about a fixed point means a body rotates or revolves around a fixed point means this particle only in case one edge is i'm fixing so then now who the particle is moves like this so this is comes under a rotation in rotational what is happening different particles of the rigid body are having different directions different velocities different 
accelerations. Why? Because you can consider a body is rotating about a fixed point. Then what happens? The particle at here having this direction. The particle at here having this direction. The particle at top this direction. The particle at means different particles. Four particles are having different directions, different velocities, different acceleration. How the velocity different? What is the velocity of the particle at the center in rotational motion? Center does not move, but total body moves. So that means velocity at the center zero. But different particles are having different velocities. Next, oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion means simply to and fro motion. To and fro motion of your body about a fixed point. That we can say that oscillatory motion. The to and fro motion of your body about a fixed point is called oscillatory motion. To and fro motion of your body about a fixed point. Pendulum best example. Random motion. Random motion means it comes under 3D also. A body is moving without any particular direction. So that can be moving zigzag like this. So that motion we can say that translatory motion. Sorry, random motion. Okay, students. Uh, once if you want to make the definition, write the definition of the translatory motion. Yes, no doubt. The motion of the body is said to be translational. The motion of the body is uh, said to be translational. The different particles of the body, the different particles of the body are having same direction, same velocity, same displacement and same acceleration. Different particles of the body are having same velocity, same displacement, same acceleration, then the motion is translatory. The motion is translatory. And we will continue after this. So next we will move to motion parameters. What are motion parameters? Motion parameters. In motion parameters, first of all, we are taking about distance, then displacement, speed, velocity, and then acceleration. Acceleration. Distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Generally, distance we are representing with a letter S. And it is a scalar function. What is scalar? Scalar means a physical quantity which is having only magnitude. Only magnitude is called a scalar function. If a physical quantity is having both magnitude and direction, that is called vector. Magnitude means a person is walking 5 meters. 5 meters, he walked 5 meters. Then 5 is the magnitude. 5 meters, you can take 5 meters is the magnitude. In case if you have mentioned a person is walking 5 meters towards north. 5 meters towards north. 5 meters towards north or east whatever. So here in case if you are mentioning the direction a person is walking towards east 5 meters. So means here 5 meters is the magnitude. This east we are mentioning the direction. So that means that will be goes to the vector. Vector means a physical quantity, a quantity which is having both magnitude and the direction that is called vector. Okay, so distance generally we are representing with yes, and again we can discuss about scalars and vectors. And displacement, nothing but s bar. Displacement, s bar. Bar represents vector. Speed, v, only v is speed. Velocity, v bar. Because it is vector, it is scalar. Acceleration, a bar. 
acceleration is also a vector and let's see one by one we will discuss first of all about the distance what is a distance distance is nothing but the total length of the path the total length of the path or else the original length of the path or else the actual length of the path length of the path the total length of the path is called distance and it's already i told you scalar functions and distance we are generally measuring the unit si unit is meters meters and what about displacement Displacement is a vector function, but how do we define the displacement? Displacement is the the shortest distance, the shortest distance between two points, between two points and line joining line joining from initial to final initial to final so the shortest distance between the two points and line joining from initial to final initial point to final point it is called displacement here one thing here distance depends on path followed by the body path followed by the body means what is the meaning of that how the particle is circulating how the particle is moving so what is the path followed by the body distance depends on path followed by the body but the displacement depends on only initial and final points distance depends on path followed by the body which depends on path depends on path followed by the body path followed by the body and it is independent on path independent on path but depends on initial and final points depends on initial and final points so very important points here what are that distance depends on path followed by the body it may depends on initial or final points but the displacement depends on only initial and final points it's independent on path followed by the body so what is the meaning of that let's see so again we can give that this is a vector function again we are measuring in meters only so let's see one small example here here i am considering a person he starts from point a and he has to be moved from a to is a travel to b up to b 4 meters and then b to c 3 meters a to b 4 meters b to c 3 meters a to b 4 meters or b to c 3 meters right now abhi what about the displacement and the distance of the person distance and displacement of the person actually according to the definition of distance hum kya bol sakte a to b 4 meter b to c 3 meters so what is the distance bole to actual length of the path distance bole to actual length of the path actually what is the actual length of the path actual length of the path aap dekhe to 3 plus 4 that is equal to 7 meters 7 meters and displacement liye to displacement the shortest distance between the two points and line joining from initial to final ये initial point होगा और ये final point होगा ये तो line joining किए तो yes the shortest distance from A to C how much 
कितना होगा अंडर रूट फोर स्क्वेर प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर वॉट इज द वैल्यू फोर स्क्वेर सिक्सटीन प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर सो रिस्प्लेसमेंट इज गोइंग अंडर रूट फोर स्क्वेर प्लस थ्री स्क्वेर सो दैट इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन प्लस नाइन उसका वैल्यू हो जाएगा ट्वेंटी फाइव रूट ट्वेंटी फाइव बोले तो फाइव फाइव मीटर्स सो अभी देखो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन पाथ किधर से गया था ए टू बी और बी टू सी यहां से यहां तक और यहां से यहां तक बट डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑन पाथ इट्स क्रिएटिंग द न्यू पाथ एंड देर इज ओनली वी आर ज्वाइनिंग द लाइन फ्रॉम इनिशियल टू फाइनल इनिशियल से फाइनल हमने एक लाइन ज्वाइन किया था so that is goes to the displacement so see here once again displacement depends on path sorry distance depends on path displacement is the shortest distance between a and c so that is simply the example of how the displacement how the displacement depends on initial and final point and it is independent on path but distance depends on path followed by the body okay students let's see some examples here what is the distance and displacement conditions so let's move to the first example here a particle starts the body starts from the point a and moving along the circumference of the circle of circular path and again reaching the same point which is starting from this point again reaching the same point then what is the distance and as well as displacement what is the distance and as well as displacement so just now only we discuss about distance distance is depends on total length of the path distance depends on total length of the path how much it which is travel the path which is equal to circumference of the circle circumference of the circle how much to pi r circumference of the circle is 2 pi r then what about the displacement what about the displacement displacement is equal to final point and initial point both are coincide each other nothing but the displacement of the particle is zero displacement of the particle is zero so means particle starts from point a and again which reaches point means the distance depends on path followed by the body but displacement depends on initial and final points let's one more example a particle is moving from a to b along the cir cir circular path only but semi circular path so this what about the distance here the distance is equal to how much it is semi circular means half of the circumference of the circle circumference of the circle by 2 circumference of the circle mein half karo half kiya to kya ho jayega 2 by r by 2 matlab kitna hoga simply pi r distance is pi r next displacement displacement is equal to s bar is equal to direct किधर से किधर ए टू बी कितना है रेडियस आर दिए तो कितना होगा ए टू बी टू आर डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज इक्वल टू टू आर डिस्टेंस इज इक्वल टू पाई आर क्यू डिस्टेंस इज द एक्चुअल लेंथ ऑफ द पाथ डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज द शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस नथिंग बट शॉर्टकट डायरेक्टली टू आर लेट्स मूव टू वन मोर so here the particle traveled one fourth of the circumference so radius is r only then what is the distance here the distance is equal to simply s is equal to 2 pi r by 4 because one fourth of the circumference of the circle matlab uska answer kya ho jayega pi r by 2 what is the answer for that pi r by 2 is the distance then what about the displacement displacement is nothing but 
see here this is r and this is also r this is initial position of consider kare to ye final position ye shortcut liye to this is the shortcut that means you need to apply the pythagoras theorem r r under root under root r square plus r square the value is goes to simply root 2 r under root r square plus r square the value is under root r distance is a pi r by 2 and displacement is root 2 into r let's see one more example particle starts from a and coming up to b by this path by this path this we can able to view three fourth of the circumference of the circle so then distance is equal to distance is equal to distance s is equal to 2 pi r by 2 pi r 3 fourth 3 by 4 into 2 pi r 3 by 4 into 2 pi r 3 fourth of the circumference so that means how much you are getting distance the distance goes to simply 3 by 2 pi r distance goes to 3 by 2 pi r and displacement is this is the initial point and this is the final point and this will be the displacement how much directly here what we wrote how much root 2 r displacement is equal to simply root 2 into r distance is equal to 3 by 2 pi r displacement is equal to root 2 into r so here see here what are that uh, we consider first path is full circle semicircular semicircular and then uh, one fourth of the circle and then last three fourth of the circular path like that we saw first condition distance to pi r displacement zero second condition distance pi r displacement two r third condition distance pi r by two displacement root two r fourth condition distance three by two pi r displacement is root 2 into r next let's move to this so here well, there is another condition what is that a particle is traveling from a to b how much distance 10 meters 10 meters a to b and then b to c 5 meters b to c 5 meters 5 meters means 5 meters backward 10 meters forward and 5 meters backward then what about the total distance and displacement let's see distance distance is nothing but again what we are saying that actual length of the path or total length of the path what is the total length a to b plus b to c simple a to b 10 meters b to c 5 meters so then distance is equal to simply 10 plus 5 15 15 meters distance is 15 meters and comes to displacement displacement s bar is equal to a to a to b a to b if you are considering according to the coordinate system this direction we can consider like positive x axis and this direction we can consider like negative x axis based on that you can take a to b and then minus b to c why minus it is immediately means the particle is going like this and immediately change its direction to it nothing but forward and then backward forward plus backward minus because displacement depends on direction so that means forward how much 10 backward how much 5 so then what is the displacement 5 only and also we know that displacement depends on actual length of the path no only depends on initial and final points displacement and distance depends on actual length of the path let's move we have one more problem here we'll solve one more problem what is that let's see now here initial point is a initial point is particle is traveling from a to b 
and then b to c and then b to c see here display distance distance is equal to actual length of the path a to b a b and then b to c plus b c a b plus b c a b how much 5 meters b c how much 10 meters whatever it is forward or backward upward or downward it's independent because distance is a scalar function and what about the displacement distance s bar is equal to forward a to b minus b to c a to b how much distance 5 b to c minus 10 why minus 10 it is completely backward so the final displacement is minus 5 meters where minus represent here plus represent see here here plus 5 plus 5 meters plus 5 meters represent the final position of the c in the positive x-axis 5 meters of the positive x-axis means 5 meters of forward 5 meters of forward here minus 5 represent the final position of the c is 5 meters of backward it is the initial position of a and what is the final position here 5 meters forward again 5 meters again लेकिन यहाँ पे आने तक 5 मीटर्स पीछे, पीछे बोले तो बैकवर्ड, नथिंग बट माइनस 5 मीटर्स। सो दिस इज़ अ डिस्टेंस एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट एंड वी डिस्कस सम मोर प्रॉब्लम्स। ओके लेट्स सी हियर वी हैव टू इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चंस। फर्स्ट सी द लास्ट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन। ए ड्रंकर is a walking along the straight road is walking along the straight road he takes five uh, steps forward five steps forward is like this and then three steps backward every condition he is going like that only repeating repeating and so on five steps forward one two three four five three steps back then what is the distance here okay that's late that's later and also on means is repeating that each step is equal to one meter long and it takes one second of time each step one meter long one meter distance and one second of time it takes and there is a pit on the road generally this is possible in our roads pits is yes. uh, on the road 30 meters away from the straight road is 30 meters on the road 30 meters away from him him uh, the drunkard will fall into the pit after your time off after means after how much time he's fall into the pit means simply uh, just imagine he's the person he's the person he's moving on the straight road there is a pit a small hole like a small pit so this is how much distance uh, 13 meters how much distance 13 meters 13 meters so how much time is taken to fall in that that's is our problem so uh, interesting question huh? so see here first thing he personally starts from here is a traveling first 5 meters first five meters and then three meters backward five meters forward again all three meters backward matlab idhar displacement kitna hoga two meters yes or no yes and again he's starting from here again he's moving five meters forward five meters forward and three meters backward how kitna that means how much displacement again two meters up to here or for me five meters forward three meters backward yeah that it now four or yeah that six over 
and again 5 meters forward 3 meters backward and then it now got 8 or 5 meters forward it now got 30 that he is fall into the pit so let's see here first we are calculating first he is moving from here to here 5 meters forward kitna time lagega 5 seconds or 3 meters backward kitna time lagega 3 seconds 5 seconds minus 3 seconds lene ka no he is coming back but time is not coming back time is never comes back time is positive so see here so to travel 2 meters displacement how much time we taken once again see here 5 meters forward 5 seconds 3 meters backward 3 seconds nothing but he took 8 seconds to travel 2 meters from here to here 2 meters of displacement kitna time liya tha? 8 seconds again another 2 meters another 8 seconds another 2 meters another 8 seconds another 2 meters another 8 seconds means see here once again from here to here 5 meters forward 3 meters backward means displacement is 2 meter time is 8 seconds again from here to here 5 meters backward 2 minutes 5 meters forward 2 meters backward matlab again 8 minutes 8 seconds 2 meters displacement again from here to here 5 meters forward 3 meters back means 2 meters 8 seconds 5 meters forward 3 meters backward another 2 meters another 8 seconds so now from here 5 meters only forward after that he is not able to come back because he is fallen he is falling into that how much time is taken 5 seconds just add the time 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 32 plus 5 how much time is taken by the person to fall into the pit is 37 seconds. How much time is taken by the person to fall into the pit is 37 seconds. Once again see here. Once again see here clearly. Person is walk, starts from here. is moving 5 meters forward, 3 meters backward. Means 5 meters forward, 3 meters. Means actually how much time is taken? 8 seconds. How much displacement rather? 2 meters. 5 seconds for 5 meters forward, 3 meters backward, 8 seconds, displacement to, displacement to, displacement to, 8, 8, 8. But whenever he is reaching 8, from 8 to 5 meters forward, 13 meters, our target came. So just he fall in that. Again, he is not coming back. So that's why how much time is taken total? 37 seconds. So you can repeat the same problem. If the ditch or if the pit is at 10, 11 meters from the 11 meters from this point. How much time is taken? How much time is taken? How much time is taken? If it is 11 meters, we solved 13 meters. If it is 11 meters, how much time taken? You can practice and you can solve it. And send me on the comments. Okay, come here. Next problem. A particle is starts from the origin. Means it starts from the origin. First, you can take. Yes, it's the origin and goes along the x-axis is moving along the x-axis to a point 20 meters comma zero to a point 20 meters comma zero and then returns to the same line returns on the same line it is returning on the same line to a point minus 20 meters comma zero minus 20 meters comma zero then yes distance S bar displacement. What is the distance and displacement? That is so. Previous one we saw. And second, see here. The distance is equal to distance is equal to how much is time? This is the initial position here, and this is the final position. You can give the numbering. I I am giving here something J. So first is going I to J, and then it's coming from J to F. J to F. I to J distance, how much? 20 meters. J to F, how much? 40 meters. So that is equal to distance is 60 meters. Remember one thing, distance never depends on direction. Next, displacement. 
displacement is equal scoring i to j minus j to f y minus backward displacement depends on direction i to j 20 j to f j to f how much minus 40 j to f you don't consider this because from here to here how much distance 20 from here to here how much distance 20 so that's why i'm considering 20 plus 20 as 40 you don't consider again minus 20 na? from here to here 20 and from here to here 20 backwards so that's right so minus finally how much its displacement is minus 20 meters minus stands for negative x axis from here to here how much is displacement minus 20 meters this is distance and this is displacement so just now we discussed about the problems and one more very important point related to distance and displacement see here if the particle is moving in a straight line if your particle is moving in a straight line so then what about the distance and displacement if the particle is moving in a straight line then distance traveled by the body is equal to displacement traveled by the body Distance and displacement both are same. Distance is equal to displacement. If the particle is moving in a straight line, distance is equal to displacement. In case, if the particle is moving in a curved path, curved path means like this, curved path. So then, what is happening? This is the distance and this is displacement. Distance and displacement in this condition distance is greater than displacement distance is greater than displacement distance is equal to displacement if the particle is moving in a straight line if the particle is moving in a curved path it is in straight line straight line and this is curved path curved path distance display distance is greater than displacement Finally, what we can say that whatever it, the distance, the distance always greater than or is equal to displacement. The distance always greater than or equal to displacement. Distance is always greater than or is equal to displacement. If it is the straight line, distance is equal to displacement. If it is the curved path, distance is greater than displacement. And next, so some conditions distance may be become miss distance always positive, and some conditions it may zero. Displacement in just now only we saw the displacement sometimes it is positive, sometimes it's negative, and sometimes it is zero also. But what are the possibilities to become distance zero? What are the possibilities to become distance zero? Only one possibility to become distance zero, the particle is at rest. If the particle is at rest, in this only one particular condition only, distance becomes zero. And remaining conditions, distance is not becomes zero because which is independent on path initial and final point it depends on only path followed by the body so that's why even a small inch that is displaced there is a distance that's not becomes zero but what are the possibilities to become so displacement zero here displacement zero in this condition also displacement zero. if the particle is at rest displacement is zero and if the particle is returns to the initial point what is the condition uh, another condition to becomes zero if the initial and final points both are coincide initial and final points both are coincide initial and final points both are coincide initial point and final point final point if both are coincide both are coincide so then what is happening here displacement zero but distance is not zero in this condition distance is not zero 
What is the condition? Only condition distance become zero. Particle is at rest condition. Then only distance zero. Displacement here zero. And again final and initial point coincide. Means particle is going forward and again coming backward to the same point. Displacement zero. And particle is moving in a circular path. In a circular path. Again which complete the this display, displacement is zero. And next uh, we will discuss the motion parameters in the next session we will discuss about speed and as well as velocity.